Hemorrhoids piles. Introduction. Hemorrhoids, piles, are blood vessels located in the smooth muscles of the walls of the rectum and anus. They are a normal part of the anatomy and are located at the junction where small arteries merge into veins, plexus. They are cushioned by smooth muscles and connective tissue. Definition. Hemorrhoids are swollen and inflamed veins around the anus or in the lower rectum. The rectum is the last part of the large intestine leading to the anus. The anus is the opening at the end of the digestive tract where bowel contents leave the body. Hemorrhoids, hemorrhoids, also called piles, are swollen veins in anus and lower rectum, similar to varicose veins. Hemorrhoids can develop inside the rectum, internal hemorrhoids, or under the skin around the anus, external hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids, also known as piles, are swollen veins in the lower part of the anus and rectum. Types There are two types of hemorrhoids. External hemorrhoids External hemorrhoids are located at the anal opening, just beneath the skin. These tissues rarely cause problems unless they thrombose, form a blood clot. When this occurs, a hard, bluish lump may appear. A thrombosed hemorrhoid also causes sudden, severe pain. In time, the clot may go away on its own. This sometimes leaves a skin tag of tissue stretched by the clot. Internal hemorrhoids. Internal hemorrhoids often occur in clusters around the wall of the anal canal. They are usually painless. But they may prolapse, protrude out of the anus, due to straining or pressure from hard stool. After the bowel movement is over, they may then reduce, return inside the body. Internal hemorrhoids often bleed. They can also discharge mucus. Grading of hemorrhoids. Based on the physical exam, the doctor may assign a grade to internal hemorrhoids. The grades are based on the severity of symptoms. It shows the severity of hemorrhoids. Grade I hemorrhoids do not protrude from the anus. They may bleed, but otherwise cause few symptoms. Grade 2 hemorrhoids protrude from the anus during bowel movements. They reduce back into the anal canal when straining stops. Grade 3 hemorrhoids protrude on their own or with straining. They do not reduce by themselves, but can be pushed back into place. Grade 4 hemorrhoids protrude and cannot be reduced at all. They can also be painful and may require prompt treatment. Causes Swelling in the anal or rectal veins causes hemorrhoids. Several factors may cause this swelling, including Chronic constipation or diarrhea Straining during bowel movements Sitting on the toilet for long periods of time Strenuous exercise or heavy lifting A lack of fiber in the diet Heredity Spinal cord injury Loss of rectal muscle tone Rectal surgery Episiotomy Anal intercourse Colon malignancy Hepatic disease Obesity Faulty bowel function due to overuse of laxatives or NMRs Straining during bowel movements Another cause of hemorrhoids is the weakening of the connective tissue in the rectum and anus that occurs with age Pregnancy can cause hemorrhoids by increasing pressure in the abdomen Pathophysiology Clinical manifestations The most common symptom of internal hemorrhoids is bright red blood on stool, on toilet paper, or in the toilet bowl after a bowel movement. Internal hemorrhoids that are not prolapsed are usually not painful. Prolapsed hemorrhoids often cause pain, discomfort, and anal itching. Blood clots may form in external hemorrhoids. A blood clot in a vein is called a thrombosis. Thrombosed external hemorrhoids cause bleeding, painful swelling, or a hard lump around the anus. When the blood clot dissolves, extra skin is left behind. This skin can become irritated or itch. Excessive straining, rubbing, or cleaning around the anus may make symptoms, such as itching and irritation, wars. Hemorrhoids are not dangerous or life-threatening. Symptoms usually go away within a few days, and some people with hemorrhoids never have symptoms. Diagnostic Evaluation History Taking It includes a comprehensive medical, surgical, dietary, occupational, 
personal habits, socioeconomical history with the assessment of the sign and symptoms patient experiences. Physical examination. A visual exam is used to view the outer anal skin. A digital rectal exam is used to check for hemorrhoids or other problems in the anal canal. It is done using a lubricated gloved finger. An anoscopic exam is done using a special viewing tube called an anoscope. The scope helps doctor view the anal canal. Proctoscopy Colonoscopy A flexible, lighted tube called a colonoscope is inserted through the anus, the rectum, and the upper part of the large intestine, called the colon. The colonoscope transmits images of the inside of the rectum and the entire colon. Sigmodoscopy This procedure is similar to colonoscopy, but it uses a shorter tube called a sigmodoscope and transmits images of the rectum and the sigmoid colon, the lower portion of the colon that empties into the rectum. Barium enema X-ray A contrast material called barium is inserted into the colon to make the colon more visible in X-ray pictures. Management Home remedies Over-the-counter topical treatments, such as hydrocortisone or hemorrhoid cream, can ease your discomfort from hemorrhoids. Soaking anus in a sitz bath for 10 to 15 minutes per day can also help. Practice good hygiene by cleaning anus with warm water during a shower or bath every day. But don't use soap, as soap can aggravate hemorrhoids. Also avoid using dry or rough toilet paper when wiping after a bubble movement. Using a cold compress on anus can help reduce hemorrhoid swelling. Pain relievers, such as acetaminophen, ibuprofen, or aspirin can also alleviate the pain or discomfort. Non-surgical management. Rubber band ligation. Rubber band ligation is a common office treatment for internal hemorrhoids and is often recommended as the initial surgical treatment for grades 1 to 3 hemorrhoids. The procedure involves placing a rubber band around a portion of redundant anorectal mucosa. This causes strangulation of the blood supply to the hemorrhoid, resulting in tissue necrosis and sloughing of the hemorrhoid in 5 to 7 days. Stapled hemorrhoidopexy. Stapled hemorrhoidopexy is an alternative treatment for grades 2 to 4 hemorrhoids. The device removes a circumferential column of mucosa and submucosa immediately above the hemorrhoids, thus interrupting the blood supply. The ring of staples fixes the downwardly displaced vascular cushions back into their original locations to restore anatomy and function. Sclerotherapy Sclerotherapy for hemorrhoids is a less invasive, less painful procedure that causes the problematic hemorrhoid to shrivel and dissipate within a short period of time. Sclerotherapy usually is successful, but it is not a permanent solution and might need to be repeated, and there is a chance of fairly heavy bleeding. 5% phenol in almond oil is injected in submucosa just above the base of hemorrhoid causing inflammation and scarring. It is an OPD procedure but complications like prostatitis and sepsis can occur. Infrared coagulation Infrared coagulation involves the application by a polymer probe tip of radiation from a tungsten halogen lamp to the base of the hemorrhoid. This creates an ulcer that subsequently heals, producing cicatrization, scarring, that reduces blood flow to the hemorrhoid. The procedure is well tolerated but success rates are lower than those with rubber band ligation. Infrared coagulation may be considered in patients who are on anticoagulant therapy. Bipolar diathermy Bipolar diathermy for hemorrhoid uses electric current of very high frequency. The electrical energy is then used to thicken the affected tissue. Bipolar diathermy for hemorrhoid may just require several sessions before one could get rid of all the piles though. Cryotherapy Cryotherapy is based on the concept that freezing the internal hemorrhoid at low temperatures can lead to tissue destruction. A special probe is used, through which nitrous oxide at 60 degree to 80 degree C or liquid nitrogen at 196 degree C is circulated. The procedure is time consuming and associated with a foul smelling profuse discharge, irritation and pain. The procedure is no longer recommended for the treatment of internal hemorrhoids. Surgical Management Excisional Hemorrhoidectomy In excisional hemorrhoidectomy, an elliptical incision is made over the hemorrhoidal complex, which is then mobilized from the underlying sphincter and excised. 
The wound is closed with sutures. Doppler guided hemorrhoidal artery ligation. It involves a proctoscope with the Doppler transducer integrated in the probe allowing sequential identification of the position and depth of superior rectal arterial branches, usually 5 to 7 are found at one level, which are then selectively ligated 2 to 3 cm above the dentate line at two levels 1-1.5 cm apart by absorbable sutures via a lateral ligation window within the scope. The interference with the blood supply suppresses the bleeding and volume of the hemorrhoids and symptomatic relief is usually evident within 6 to 8 weeks. Nursing Management Administer local anesthetic as prescribed. As needed, provide warm sits baths or cold compresses to reduce local pain, swelling, and inflammation. Provide the patient with high-fiber diet and encourage adequate fluid intake and exercise to prevent constipation. Monitor the patient's pain level and the effectiveness of the prescribed medications. Check for signs and symptoms of anal infection, such as increases pain and foul-smelling anal drainage. Teach the patient about hemorrhoidal development, predisposing factors, and tests. Encourage the patient to eat high-fiber diet to promote regular bowel movement. Emphasize the need for good anal hygiene. Caution against vigorous wiping with washcloths and using harsh soaps. Encourage the use of medicated astringent pads and toilet paper without dyes or perfumes. Complications Iron deficiency anemia, if blood loss is significant. Severe pain caused by a blood clot in a hemorrhoid. Infection or ulceration of a hemorrhoid. Prevention The key to prevention is proper diet and habits to produce softer stools thus reducing the need to strain. Add plenty of fiber to diet, fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains. Good dietary fiber sources include whole wheat, brown rice, oatmeal, pears, carrots, buckwheat, bran. Dietary fiber helps create bulk in the intestines, which softens the stool, making it easier to pass. Drink plenty of fluids, 8 to 10 glasses of water daily. Don't hurry or strain to push bowel movements, but avoid prolonged toilet sitting. Avoid vigorous wiping after bowel movements, to decrease irritation. Lose weight, if overweight. Exercise regularly.